And thank you, Carter, for organizing this uh, beautiful event, very inspiring, and for inviting us to it. Well, uh, I'm going to present, we are going to present a project carried out in partnership together with Carto and BBVA. BBVA is a Spanish bank, first bank in Mexico, second one in Spain. And Carto, you, you know very well. Well, I'm not the data scientist. Uh, Juan de Dios is data scientist. <laughs> I'm urban planner. We work very well together. Uh, we are very complementary. When I, when I attended the college, university, I was taught to plan cities uh, to decide where a residential area should be, equipments, industrial areas, tertiary areas, to design infrastructures, streets. So we saw the city as a static entity, which is not, because what are we missing here? Do you miss something here? This is the physical substract um, of society, of social living, but what uh, we are missing here is people. And it's the central thing when you are talking about cities. So we use cities, we move from one place to other, we use the cities as commercial services, or we, 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 we move around cities uh, to practice any activity lesser. For example, we, we meet with friends um, and meet with them in a restaurant or attend um, well, a concert. And all these leaves a uh, digital footprint through different sources. In our case, we are using data payments uh, from credit card payments, digital, digital data from our uh, car holders and our point of sales in, the, in, in those uh, shops and premises and, and restaurants that accept credit card payments. Of course, we work with anonymized data. We don't have to worry. It's just statistics. We also aggregate data. We erase names, IDs. We are not interested in any specific individual activity, but in the aggregated flows of consumption and money flows in the cities. But this is a very interesting data source. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. When you pay with your credit card in a place Mm, this, is, uh, this is not the answer to a survey. So surveys are very valuable uh, for qualitative aspects, but uh, for quantitative aspects, uh, now we have many other data sources with high volume, much more high, higher volume than, um, than surveys. Social networks are one of them. Mm, telco data are a very nice source for uh, mobility, for example, and payments which are also geolocated as telco data. So, the fact is that official urban inner boundaries were known decades ago. In the case of uh, the three cities we have uh, worked with, Madrid, Barcelona, and Mexico, we have analyzed these cities in our project Urban Discovery. So in the case of Madrid uh, and Barcelona is from the 80s, and in the case of Mexico, those uh, boundaries were drawn more than 40 years ago. And these big cities have evolved, of course. These, these boundaries drive decisions nowadays. So they were drawn four decades ago, but they are driving current decisions, like, for example, the assignation of uh, the school for your children or, or the areas for your parking when you do it in Madrid. So this was our main question. Can we redraw urban inner boundaries according to how people make use of cities? We have to divide the territory, and we chose the hexagon form to do so, because it's more or less an isotropic uh, grid, the result. And, and it, 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 it attends to the um, uh, central places theory, um, which is quite nice to analyze territory. Then we measure the strength of relations among hexagons based on copayments. So these were pairs of payments made by the same card in different points within the time frame of three hours at maximum. And uh, according to, to the uh, strength of those links between hexagons, we run an algorithm to cluster the hexagons and to redraw city boundaries. And this was the result. So here we are comparing 
the official districts of Madrid, 21 official districts, which are those lines there, with the clusters that resulted from uh, our algorithm. This is how an algorithm see, uh, CD when you fed it with uh, data, payments data. So in some cases, uh, our conclusions are the same as the official boundaries. In other cases, they are not. But we wanted to describe, uh, to describe the, um, the previous resulting areas, and those uh, the, the, first, the first time we ran the algorithm, we obtained 10 communities are very heterogeneous. We cannot describe these areas because they're very heterogeneous and many different things happen inside those big areas, the 10 big areas. So we ran a second time the algorithm for every one of these resulting um, uh, divisions and uh, we obtained these 52 sub-communities which are small enough to be described. And why? Uh, because uh, cities are not uh, homogeneous in our daily activity. We reduce big cities, we don't cover the whole territory, and uh, we use smaller parts for specific activities. So we can distinguish touristic areas in the city, business areas in the city, residential areas, and commercial areas as well. Those functional areas are specialized and can be described. Location and rural spatial configuration has a lot to do with the specialization of every area. So there is a big responsibility for urban planners here. And we can read cities based on these results. And now, Juan de Dios is talking to you about how we did it. Okay. So let's see how we did it to uh, describe these uh, communities. We had our transactional data, so we use it. And uh, we got 17 attributes, uh, all of them coming from the, that transactional data. Some of them, uh, I will present you further, are really straightforward, like uh, you can see up there the high commercial density, but some of them had some um, inference uh, uh, behind them. We, don't, uh, we didn't stop there, we go one step farther and combining those attributes we got these six uh, area tags that you can see on the bottom. That uh, The good thing that uh, they have is that uh, we divided the three cities with these six tags that are a combination of the attributes and those uh, tags uh, show the way that uh, these three cities develop uh, through, the, through the years. So let's go and see some examples of these attributes. For example, we have the, the timestamp of the, each transaction. So we could see uh, in, uh, at what time tho uh, those transactions uh, took place. And that attribute, the one that says business center, has to do with uh, uh, zones or places of the, the city that uh, we can see a lot of uh, transactions, activity in weekdays, but and relatively low commercial density. In the other hand, we have the residential areas that are the other part of, of the coin, because we can see that the activity during the weekdays is much uh, smaller, and also we can see that the tourists don't go to the residential areas. Here, uh, well, you are seeing these uh, screenshots that all of them are from the, the web that uh, I'm, I'm going to show you later. And uh, what we can do is uh, use the, all the attributes to uh, select which one are we interested on and uh, combine them. For example, here you can see the result of combining the people under 45, the, the presence of a lot of people paying with their cards in, in Madrid, and also see uh, which uh, new development areas uh, have to do with that. So we can see that the people under 45 uh, are living and uh, making transactions in the surroundings of the city. Here there's another example that could be interesting for those coming to Madrid for the first time. You can see the nightlife activity also and the areas where people with uh, high power uh, are uh, making track sanctions. And that's the, the last one. We also know 
in which categories uh, the people are paying. So we can see here that the cultural uh, payments the in museums, uh, art galleries, uh, bookshops, has a lot, of, a lot of to do with the, the places of the, the city where the museums are here in Madrid. If you know the city, you can know that over there, there are the, the big museums here in Madrid. So if we go to the, to the computer, I'm going to show you the thing that uh, I like most about the, this uh, tool is that uh, as we use the, the same uh, methodology for the three, three cities and the same attributes, that makes possible to compare them. So I can select which attributes I'm interested in Madrid and then change to another city and see which place has uh, like twins in different cities. So for those who are coming to Madrid for the first time, and are st staying here this weekend. Let's see which places are having more weekend spending. Well, you can see the, the surroundings because people live there, and also the, the city center. Let's suppose we want to go shopping. So let's look for the, the places that you can go and buy fashion. Here there is a big... Uh, um, Mall. Mall, yeah. And uh, here is the city centers also. And let's say that after uh, going shopping, we want to have dinner there. So let's look where a good restaurants are. So there you go. This place is near the city center, near Carto offices. So <laughs> let's see that uh, we can give it a tag. So let's say that this is Saturday evening. Okay. And then here we have the option to see that selection in other cities. So for those that are staying in Madrid for Saturday and then are going to, to Barcelona, let's see which uh, places they can visit if they want to, to make the same there. For, for example, you have Villa de Gracia that it's now in the papers because of the gentrification problem. So this is an example of things you can do. You can do that with uh, Mexico also. So uh, I encourage you to use the, the, the tool and make your, your tags and uh, use it. So if we go back to the presentation. Well, there's another example of uh, the big department stores. What's another wo good thing about this tool? That it's totally free, it's open, it's public, you can visit, you can play with it, uh, you don't have to pay. And also you can uh, download all the save files, also the divisions and also the, the attributes, so that you can build your applications on top of uh, that uh, maps and you can uh, use them for, for the thing you want. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, for in our opinion, for uh, small stores that want to open an another uh, shop and see which uh, places they can uh, use that are similar to the one that they have succeeded already, or also for the administration. But apart from that, if you want to have more data and you, you, want, you are interested in, in other uh, geographies, EBBI has an, uh, an API market, the one that uh, uh, has the, the same source is pay stats. You have uh, a lot of services there. You can uh, measure tourism, you can make uh, the, the origin and the destination where the people living in your geography are, going, uh, are paying or the people that are paying in your uh, zip code, where are they uh, coming from. You have a lot of information there and uh, it's anonymized, it's aggregated, but there's a lot of uh, cool information there. So thank you everyone for coming and if you have any questions, we will answer them.